themselves to higher standards. Like one person coming sick from a product is enough. Like you got to get to work. No, I couldn't agree more, Chris. And, you know, one thing that I remember, you know, early on in the days of the legalized marijuana campaigns here, and we've talked with folks that have the same mental mindset, um, whether it be, you know, the sponsors we work with or some of the guests that we've had on this podcast, is that there's always been this understanding level of uh, kind of ethics, you know, the ethical way about how this industry should operate. And we've probably skewed or lost our way in regards to that with the now influx of so much corporate and venture capitalist dollars we're starting to see these ceos kind of be more of that capitalistic prick that we you know we strive to not talk about or not be about in recent years the same billionaires that are the same mental mindsets that see people as a dollar value or something along those lines rather than a human in themselves. And it seems like we used to not always be that way, whether it be because the market was a little smaller, um, the circles that people ran with, you know, it was more ancestral. And so you knew the other folks, the other players in the game. And so you kind of operated under this guise of a moral code in addition to the standards and practices of how you should be growing and running an operation, you know? Right. I guess those hippies got something right with the Freedom of Information Act. Yeah, well, I guess that may be the case. But it seems like, we, you know, this is probably one of those signs of, you know, America's business practices seeping into overall human decency and ruining a whole industry or giving at least a brand a bad name for it. So maybe Peter should take a step back, maybe even a step down, seeing as there's email links and things of that nature that shows that he knew about this and then still waited a period of fucking years before actually switching out the goddamn recipe. I mean, there's calls for concern as well as for anger. And I just have a feeling, you know, those commercials we saw in the 90s and 2000s like mesothelioma mesothelioma or have you been exposed to asbestos from cleaning out gutters and ceilings that's going to be one of those fucking commercials in 10 years it's going to be like did you eat 1906 midnight edibles from the years 2010 to 2015 you know that you right. you may be entitled to a large cash settlement please email me at this that's what we're well in line for yeah, and to be honest with you, uh, like I haven't, I haven't like purchased or done anything with 1906 products for quite some time, and with the uh, with the publication of this whole report, uh, out of here 1906. Like I'm not. I don't need any help damaging my fucking liver. Is that's very true. That's what a bartender who I spoke with, uh, Tay from the Easy Vegan, said, and I was like, I couldn't agree more. We just got back from pounding like pounds of wine like just fluid pounds of wine and then i'm getting told that the edibles i've been eating are fucking poisonous god damn it you can't win kip you can't win sometimes you know you really can't but yeah so that's our that's our news from the cannabis corner this week um we've had a good episode chris we have a kick-ass guest joining us this afternoon you and i got in a fairly heated debate recently about who we think has more self-control um and you're probably better at it than me, but we're going to fucking put the money where the mouth is. We're going to have some fun with it. And we'll tell everybody about that in the second part. But before we do that, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about uh, what we have on the docket for the rest of this week. And uh, I know you're jet setting. So if you want to rub it in that you're headed to sunny San Diego, fuck you. Dude, I'm stoked because this is actually like, I, I think in my previous visits to California, which have not been that many, I've never had the California burrito. The one with the French fries and the avocado shoved in the middle of it? Yeah, and the carne asada. So I'm going to, that's going to be one of the first things I tackle when I get to California is the California burrito. So I'll report back on that. I don't need you to report back. I need you to send us pictures and videos so we can post them on the internet. I know you're bad at social media, but pull out your goddamn cell phone. I believe in you. And I want you to go try at least two different burritos so you can say which one had a better one you can't just go off of one experience you got to really submerge yourself in the culture pierce okay. your ear you know maybe d- get some tip you know bleach or dye the tips of your hair you got to really get in the san diego vibe okay okay yeah I'll, I'll get some footage of some california burritos and i'll send to you and we'll post them and everybody can bask in the glory 
Yeah, we'll see what everybody wants to vote. If you can find a way to like cut it and then do the pull so we can see the cheesy goodness and see the innards of the burrito. Because otherwise it just looks like a tan dookie. Um, But yeah, you're going to have some good times over there. Yeah, yeah. I can't fucking wait. Yeah, I'm very, I mean, I'm envious. It's a good time. And you're getting that last vacation before the home stretch. We get real serious during gambling season. We're not True. a gambling podcast, but we're degenerates in every sense of the word. So, so gambling naturally follows. Yeah. Gambling, alcohol, drugs, traveling, spending everything we have in our bank accounts, whatever it may be, we're good at it. Um, okay. And then, so Chris, while you're gone, I gave your tickets away for rare, if that's cool. Yeah. As long as, long as it, as long as they respect it and enjoy the process and just get into the debauchery. Yeah. Yeah. Please join us in getting shit face drunk in a field downtown with us this week. Uh, but for real, rare is this Thursday. There's still tickets available, I think, uh, for grand tastings, VIPs, and first taste. There's three different waves, so you can avoid the plebs, or if you want to get in there early and sample all the shit and get out of there early, or if you're like me, if you like to get in there and get your hands dirty early and often, and you want to capitalize on all the time, there's tickets still available. Um, it's one of my favorite events of the year just because it's similar to like we were talking about with Vale. You know, there's a fuck ton of booze. There's a lot of food. Um, and then there's music. You know, what's not to love about some tunes and party? So Grade A prime beef going down. Yeah, grade A prime beef. You'll ship a rope the next day. Uh, it's, not, it's not good for you. You're going to go veggie the whole week after. But we're going to go big Thursday night. Yeah, y'all have fun. I can't wait to see yeah, and then we have a new episode coming out for Mile High Life for those that are listening to this tomorrow. So if you're listening on Wednesday, it's today. But if you're listening on Tuesday, tomorrow, we have a new review coming of Travel Food Eats in Colorado on uh, Mile High Life's. You'll see it on our socials. You can find the link to our YouTube page on ours. And Chris will have a new, when do you have a new article coming out for uh, Molly and the team? I'm not sure. Expect something uh, later this week, probably either Thursday or Friday. Okay. And so Chris will have a new article and then uh, we'll have some cool stuff coming down the pike. Uh, As y'all saw on the uh, social media page, we announced the competition cooking show. It'll be something fun to highlight Denver chefs and cannabis companies, as well as cook some dank food for people to enjoy. You know, it'll be fun. It'll be a filmed and everybody will sign more waivers when they come in. Cause I know that's always the fun thing that everybody likes to do at the beginning of our dinners. Uh, but uh, I think that about covers it, Chris. It sounds like it's about time to go kick it with Matt and the homies over at NLB. Figure out some non-meat products. Hell yeah. Let's dive into the dirty, dirty and the clean, clean to be exact. And you know, what better way to do that than with Eden extracts, clean, solventless, clean, digestive, clean, you know, mindset going into football season. We're trying to figure it out. And so we're going to try anything and everything. Week recap of mushrooms will be uh, starting today. And to be honest, I don't really feel any different. The psilocybin doesn't really make you feel any different. Like I'm maybe not taking nearly like, I understand people want, you want to feel like you're taking mushrooms every day, but overall, you know, I feel fine. I may be remembering things better and I don't even know it. Great. Yeah. So for the absent-minded folks out there, try out the mushroom supplement regimen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to you on location for our interview of the week. To my right, I got my boy CBCB. How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. We're getting back into the second part of the episode, so it's going to be a doozy. Hell yeah. This is actually a great one because we're going outside of our comfort zone. We were talking earlier about how I felt like a huge bag of shit after last weekend. True. With drinking and eating like a gluttonous amounts of stuff that wasn't good for you and how we have football season coming down the pipe. So we're going to kind of get our heads right, get our bodies right. And so we had to sit down with the wizard that may know how to do that better than anybody. Today we're coming to you for a brand new location in the DU neighborhood called Next Level Burger. It's Burgers for a Better World, and we're sitting down with the man, the myth, the legend behind the project itself, Matthew DeGroyder. Did I say that right, You did. You nailed it first time. That's shout out to Duolingo. I'm really getting better at this. Every morning when I take a shit, I learn a second language. Nice. Shout out to our Dutch. Good for you, self-improvement, my man. I like that. Shout out for those cheese sticks keeping you regular. Yeah, well, you know, actually, cheese sticks are constant, man, but we're trying to get more regular. 
That's like the next level of uh, walking and chewing bubblegum at the same time. I'm impressed. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. You know, I mean, people have said that uh, you know, I can multitask with the best of them. Right. You know, smoke drugs and drink at the same time. Uh-huh. But at the same time, pooping and learning second language is second fiddle. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Well, the call of nature. <laughs> you will. <laughs> All, right. All right. So he's smart and he's witty. He's going to fit in like a girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we dive into our interview with Matt, I want to give a shout out to uh, some other folks that are doing doing things the right way. That's our friends over at Eden Extracts. They're a solventless concentrate company coming to us from Parachute, Colorado. You can find the solventless rosin cartridges, uh, rosin concentrates, and the free roll with rosin infused sticks in the middle available not only at Cali's, but all of Eden Extract's properties and uh, services and products are found around the metro. And so we're vibing on them. It's a perfect season as we get into a autumn football season. The appetite is a buzzing. Same for us, Chris. We've got a lot stewing and brewing. But um, so do our friends over at Eden Extract. So if you're looking to change it up, maybe looking for that solventless, you know, hash, water, pressure, I think are the three pieces included in Eden's extraction process. These folks are doing it right. So if you like to, uh, you know, you know what you're putting into your body, go see our friends over in Eden Extracts. Right? Yeah, so we move forward. Yeah, so that was actually a perfect segue, talking about being conscious about what you put into your body. You know, we, we tease the next level burger, but we wanted to get to know a little bit about the process, the person, and the restaurant. Matt, before we dive into the new concept that you've created here on Evans Avenue, we like to start every episode the same way. And so I'm going to pass it off to Chris. I'm going to hit my vape pen and drink a little water, and let's hit this party. Yeah, right, right on. Matt, toughest question all day. Are you a transplant or a native to Colorado? Oh, that is awkward because I am a native. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. No, I actually was awkward born. For you, not yeah, us. exactly. Born in Littleton. Um, in fact, uh, I would have been. Oh lordy, it would be. It would be Adventist. That I wouldn't tell you. I was a little too small to recall because uh, I never went back. Yeah, I know. Punk. Honestly, I need to step it up. Um, so, uh, you know, this is my hometown. Uh, you know, I met my wife here. We were both going to Metro State, um, working in restaurants. Uh, my son was born here. Uh, I, I, I've got to admit that had I not married a woman from Oregon, we probably would have put the first Next Level Burger in Denver, except for it was originally her idea, so we wouldn't have anyway. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I mean, I knew this, but you started this fucking thing in Portland? Well, actually, we started in Oregon, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, PNW, baby. So, uh, we, I'm actually a transplant there, but I married a native. So I've kind of got my, uh, my, my six covered either which way, uh, whether I'm in Denver or I'm in the Portland area or central Oregon, I've got a claim to the sort of native card. I mean, that, you, you stretch really good. You've got like every bit of the people that cut their own hair demo cover. Yeah, pretty much. The yeah. Blue, the purple hair. We even have Brooklyn. So we've got a location in Brooklyn. So yeah, it, I mean, literally, we've got we've got one of the most. Ecle- I mean, our this will be our ninth restaurant, uh, and we have one of the most eclectic uh, groups of fans. I mean, they come from all walks of life, from the sort of you know vegan college edu- educated mother of two, to the construction workers that come in with paint on their pants, to those that definitely cut their own hair and walk their own walk. And we're really proud of that fact. I guess we kind of skipped a little bit ahead, so for those that don't know, Next Level Burger is a meat-free burger concept, a plant-based restaurant That's right. that has taken the world by, you know, by a distraction. You know, it seems to be that it's on the forefront of burgers needing to be less you know, beef-heavy, you know, and people are looking at eating crickets and things of that nature for supplemental ter- proteins, Yeah. and you found your calling in the, uh, the meat-free burger scene. How the fuck did you come about that? Yeah, well, you your whole life? no, no. In fact, I was, uh, I always joke, I grew up on a 100% not plant-based diet. So by the time I was, yeah, well, I'll take you one further, my man. I'm talking, you know, uh, pound size beef burgers. I, I, I am not exaggerating when I say I was eating eight, nine, ten pounds of red meat a week into my late 20s, thinking that that was the cat's meow, and, and that is not an exaggeration. I'm so talking, gout was a real fear. You know, you know I had, it, it, you would, you would, I would profess ignorance to that, but I thought that a big salad 
a big baked potato and a 24-ounce porterhouse was the sort of nectar of the gods.